what we've got going on from one structure to the next, undulating, undulating, undulating. I'll do it on the black background so you can see. Undulating, undulating, undulating. Does that make sense? And what's happening then is that the, here we go, here's a disc. Obviously it doesn't hang out that much. But that structure then is mediating the motion all of the time. But of course we put it upright and it's very easy to just have it as a load bearer. And when we want to take the pressure off it, so at least it's got the potential to push apart. Muscular compression, muscular tension will pull and drive those structures closer together. This way round, we've got a chance to give it a little bit of room. And the facet joints at the back, which are synovial, can glide. Because we know this doesn't touch because it's suspended in a tensional network. It's a kind of combination of compression and tension. And they're both balancing and working together. It doesn't want to be all one, and it doesn't want to be all the other. Does this make sense? So it can calcify across here. You see how close those uh, transverse processes are to the iliac crest? You see that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And L4 is this one as well. So that's really wide there. Now, of course, this is just one model mm. representing one body, but we do see in regular specimens that width there. They're wide structures, they do get condensed and compressed, and what we see is that the fascial tissues can harden, and we see strain in some of those. One tends to be a little longer than the other one. So what's happened at that particular point? That's fixing the iliac bone to the sacrum, that's fixing the iliac bone to the fourth and fifth lumbar. So all of a sudden, that, that pulsing, undulation can't operate as well as it could do. And in fact, if that is something that does calcify, then now you've got one sacrum that's about that big. Does this make sense? I've taken away the uplift and the potential rhythm from the spine. You know, ideally, what this wants from down here, with the pelvis phasing us, with the area formerly known as pelvic floor, that this is pulsing upwards, and it sends a rhythm up along the spine. So you can transfer motion from the foot via the hard and soft tissues through the limb towards the spine, to the front and sides of the spine, along its back, so it's got rhythm all of the time. Does that make sense? You know, the four days, we're kind of condensing part of a 10-month program that I put together into sort of you know, bite-sized chunks for you, but there's going to be a lot coming at you. And what I always tend to say with these things is just swim a little, by the end of it, don't try and swallow it. <laughs>